At this time, I will open up the public hearing as it relates to items number 52 and 53. Anyone wishing to address the board, please step forward. Identify yourself for the record. Comments will be limited to three minutes. If you spoke on this item earlier, you cannot speak again in the interest of fairness. I also ask you to please respect all of the speakers, have no applauding or cat calls subsequent to any comments that are made. Yes, who wants to begin? Whatever. My name is Melissa Letourneau. Um, that's L-E-T-O-U-R-N-E-A-U. And I think that we need to start this off by just clarifying the fact that this is not the people versus Metro. This is Metro and the people versus a board of seven people who are playing God with our lives and our money. The sheriff himself just said, okay, that it is to, is this going to reduce the responsibility of this county to fund the Metro deficit? Okay, that means that you have a responsibility to fund this. And if I can show you right here, and this is not even the only point I really want to make, so I'll be as quick as I can. Okay. Could I ask him to focus in on what she's pointing to? Right here. No, the camera. I'm asking them to Sorry. zoom in on you. Okay. okay. You will see that culture and recreation has taken a 4.8 jump from the previous budgetary year. Why do we need 175 more dollars, 175 million more dollars towards culture and recreation when you could be funding our police department if they legitimately need it? Okay. Secondly. If you really wanted to save money with Metro, okay, you can consider this. This is the traffic line item for Metro. It's $26 million. It is the highest line item in their entire budget. Okay, Metro, it, 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 I gave you all pieces of paper. I don't know if you've got them yet. I handed these out to you guys. Okay, you need to consider this, okay? If we were to reevaluate what we expect of these police officers, maybe we could save money. Maybe we could put these police officers so that they are not at odds with us. Why should we be under the thumb of laws that bodies like this and the, and the legislature have created that, that, that penalize victimless crimes? You can't, it, it's like preventative crime. It's, it's the notion that pre-crime, we can just, you know, think that someone might hurt somebody. We're taking personal responsibility completely out of the equation when we do this. So I would just say, but there are two questions here, and I hope you address those before you to make this vote. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm Don Dunphy. The police department is going through extensive training now. Where was the training in the past? It should have happened a long time ago. Where is the leadership in the, in, the, in the police department? I don't know. People are scared about the American dream. The police department has 100 surveys, and yesterday's paper said they had $137 million in reserve. Most people have little or none. Honest words need to be spoken. Every board commissioners, board and commission wants more money for services. How many boards and commissions are, there, are you people on? The players are being squeezed. Money is tight. Stronger leadership is needed by the police and legislature in the city. People voting rights have been validated by the legislature. Only the top five percent of the people, only five percent of the, the upper crust have incomes have risen. Chronic commissioners must listen to the people. They need to pay attention to people's business for the future. Voters need to make changes. The key word is money in hand. More money for police department is unacceptable. They have $137 million reserved. What have you got, folks? People need to take responsibility for, for tax votes. The governor has taken the right of the people to vote away on certain issues. Where is the justice in the county? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Uh, Wendy Putnam Park. And... I would like to start by saying that there are four generations of my family that live in Las Vegas, Nevada. And because of that, I am extremely concerned about safety, not only for myself 
or my children or grandchildren. It's when you go on and you think in the future, I want all of them to be safe, whether they're driving a car, crossing the street, going to the bank, or just being in their own neighborhoods. And I think the one and only way this is going to provide a safe community for the generations that are here now and the generations to come is to make sure that we have a solid police department that will have enough people, enough employees that can come out and respond to any calls that may come forth or to just be there. It is amazing how much difference it can make by having the mere sight of police officers walking along the strip, driving down the street. That is another way of showing that there is safety and within our own community. This particular amount of money that is being asked for is even less than what the voters have already approved. And that's where I find it extremely disturbing that we have council members that apparently really don't want to listen to the citizens of, of Las Vegas because we've already voted for this. We approved of it. We didn't get as much as we requested from the legislature, but we are asking that you give the police department this amount of money now. I think it is vital. There has been a decrease in response times, and I don't know, just happened to turn on the news last night on Channel 8, and they were doing quite a review of what the response times are for police officers now on burglary calls, disturbance calls, um, a number of things where it's not a matter of you now have to wait two minutes to get somebody to respond. You may have to wait two hours. And I find that extremely disturbing. So I'm asking you to please consider this tax. I noticed that the commission didn't have too many problems in raising the gasoline tax. I'm not seeing that as a safety issue for me and my family. And I also see that the commissioners didn't have any problem in raising your own salaries. So I would ask you seriously, this to me is so much more vital and more important to be taken care of at this time. I would also like to put in the fact that I'm now retired, 30 years as a trial attorney, and there were a number of times I probably faced a number of police officers over the year. But you know what? I still admire them, and I want them out on the streets and saving us all. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Cecil Becker. I live at 80 Mallory Street in Henderson. Uh, I just would like to say I'm absolutely opposed to this tax. We, uh, as citizens, are just pushed to the limit as it is. We pay over 50 cents a gallon on tax as it is. Uh, and just to use a couple of the sheriff's comments, uh, um, he said the number of officers has decreased. Well, so has the number of officer-involved shootings. Uh, they pay out hundreds of millions of dollars and seem unwilling or unable to uh, reprimand their officers. We have the, the district attorney. I don't know where he, at, where he is. He hides behind his desk and doesn't uh, respond to any of my emails. But, you know, they don't, they don't uh, you know, no, no there's yeah, I no gotta account ask you to Please refrain from laughter or applause. There is no accountability. And in in, in if you wear a badge, you can do whatever you want. Uh, sure, you might have to pay out a couple of millions of dollars in wrongful death lawsuits, but that doesn't come out of your pocket. We pay that. They refuse. Denver has a police force that's twice as large as ours, and they have half as many shootings as we do. What's our problem here? Why, you know, if they don't, if they're so scared, find a new job. If, uh, you know, if, if, if they fear that, you know, if, if their first response is to shoot somebody because they grab a hat, or whatever the, the situation is, that's that's ridiculous, and I don't feel like we need to fund that. There's no accountability, and uh, they just get away with whatever they want. They're they're bullies with badges, and it's ridiculous. I don't think that we, they need any more of our money. They have a surplus, spend it. Uh, they just got a pay raise, actually. They just got a, a mediator just voted them a pay raise. I make $12 an hour. I'm sure they make more than I do. And is my job dangerous? Yeah. Sometimes I'm up on roofs. Sometimes they're steep. And I'm helping people out, serving the community. I don't, you know, feel like I need to pay any more money for them. Thank you, Mr. Becker. Mr. Sanson. Thank you, Commissioners. 
Uh, Steve Sanson, President of Veterans and Politics International. Before I, uh, I continue, I just wanted to say um, I went to Commissioner Brown's barber and uh, for a little touch-up, and this is what happened to me. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. <laughs> Um, you know, when, when we look at the uh, Metropolitan Police Department, especially our leaders, uh, we want to think of uh, three things, and uh, it's transparency, integrity, and uh, fiscal responsibility. And Sheriff Doug Gillespie has uh, made uh, several comments about there's uh, 426 vacancies that needs to be filled within Metro. But uh, what he failed to tell you is that some of these vacancies were eliminated and some of these vacancies were never filled by officers. When I came here the last time and I spoke, um, I also made a comment of who visited Metro headquarters over there, Martin Luther King and, uh, and Alta. And only one county commissioner uh, raised her hand and said that she went over there because I wanted to show you guys the uh, wasteful spending that, 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 uh, that uh, Metro has put into this building at $1.2 million per month in rent, so you guys could have an understanding about the lack of fiscal responsibility. Um, the radio, I brought up the radio, $42 million that uh, the sheriff signed off for this radio communication that apparently doesn't work, caused the death of a uh, Gulf War vet, Stanley Gibson, allegedly. And uh, I'm, I'm sure there's countless others, other situations out there that uh, we haven't heard about, but yet, his time to sue this radio communication, I believe it was Dare to Sky, has been so gone he can't even go back and sue them for that radio communication problem. $134 million the sheriff has in his reserve program from the last time uh, the tax initiative went into effect. And I remember he was at the legislators and he was working on their, their heartstrings, letting them know that, hey, you know, if you don't put these cops on the street, crime is going to go up. And, and, and safety is a factor, the rank and file is a factor. But you know what, if I was sheriff of Metropolitan Police Department and I had $134 million, I'll go hire me more cops without going in front of any board if I could do that. If I was so worried about crime in, in the streets of uh, Clark County. Now, the sheriff also mentioned about these body cameras. And if you take a look at this, th this letter, that was written in May of 2013 from the undersheriff, Jim Dixon, talking about these body cameras and how they're going to use a, a pilot program at two, uh, two substations to get these body cameras out, okay? And that was part of passing this, uh, this more cops bill. But then you take a look at this letter from the PPA. It shows that Sheriff Doug Gillespie made a deal with the PPA saying that the officers the officers hired after July of 2013 don't have to wear these body I'm cameras. I'm going to wrap it up, Mr. Sanson. You know something? The, the, the integrity that goes, on, that goes with, with, the, with the sheriff of Metro has to be taken a really good look at. I don't know if you guys take a look at the collective bargaining contract. Mr. Sanson, I've got to ask you to wrap it up. I, I'm going to wrap it up, uh, Mr. Chairman. But if you take a look at the collective bargaining contract, they give six months of maternity leave for officers. And if you take a look at the, the collective bargaining contract, okay. they, pur they purge I records. Gotta, i got to cut you off now because I've got 50 other people to speak. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thanks. My name is Robert Walker. Address is 400 Brush Street. And uh, before I get started, I just want to... Uh, say one thing here about Thomas Jefferson. Dom Thomas Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence that governments are instituted among men to secure our liberties. So with that idea in mind, I want to go over one page of a 138-page report from Clark County. It's called the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. On this one page, we have funds, governmental activities, $11.5 billion non-governmental activities, $12.5 billion for a total of $24.1, and estimated collections of $2.6 billion, which brings us to $26.7 billion. We have investments by Clark County, domestic equity fund, $80 million, domestic bond fund, $66.7, money market fund, $208,000, Union Central Life Insurance Company, 1.5 million. 
New York Life Insurance, 14.7 million. New York Life Insurance, 5.2 million. New York Life Insurance, 5.3 million. New York Life Insurance, 5.2 million. New York Life Insurance, 5 million. New York Life Insurance, 4.7 million. For a total of $191 million, $23,000 in investments. Governments are instituted among men to secure our liberties, not to be our investment banker. Before we raise the sales tax for any reason whatsoever, whether it be for new brooms for the street sweeper or more cops on the street, we should find out, divest ourselves of this money, of these investments, put the money in the general fund where it belongs, and use it. We really don't need a new sales tax increase. The county has currently $23.8 billion. That's their report. It's on page 54 of the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. In case anybody wants, I can show it to you. Thank you very much. We don't need a sales tax increase. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Sisolak. Uh, I'm sorry, Chairman Sisolak and Honorable Commissioners. Last time I was here, um, we, uh, I spoke against this, and I'm asking you again to please vote against another tax. Today's October 1st, 2013, when our Affordable ha uh, Care Act goes into effect. You raised the fuel tax last couple of weeks ago. We're being taxed to death. Metro spent $42 million on a communication system that doesn't work. 100 cops are not going to make us safer. If we exercise our Second Amendment privileges and rights, our God-given right to self-defense, we're all going to be much safer. 100 cops are not going to keep us safe. I'm going to quote another founding father, Ben Franklin, said, those who would give up essential liberty for a little bit of safety deserve neither liberty or safety. 100 new police officers are not going to keep us safe. We're all going to keep each other safe. This is an open carry state. We need to exercise our Second Amendment rights, and we need to audit the Metropolitan Police Department before taxing another Clark County resident another penny. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Good morning, Chairman. This is George Hicks. Good morning, Chairman Shislak and Council and uh, fellow commissioners. This, this is totally ridiculous. Our sales tax is too high as it is already. All right? Our sales tax needs to be lowered, not raised. The way you prevent crime is to have a strong economy, not tax the people to death so that the economy flounders and then you increase crime that way. A hundred police officers is not going to decrease crime. What's going to decrease crime is to do things that gives us a strong economy. Any tax increase goes against that. So I would urge you, all of you, to vote against this. I would like you to also think about how we can decrease the sales tax, because that has a big, fact, a big effect on our economy. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Ms. Lee. Hello, guys. Um, as you guys know, I was here for the fuel tax. I am not a big fan of taxing citizens. We still have the highest foreclosure rate in the country, unfortunately. Um, one thing that I wanted to make a point that kind of piggybacks on what other people have said already, what I found very interesting when I was looking through uh, Metro's budgets, is uh, the liability insurance. Um, we have already paid out this year alone almost $2 million in retribution for lawsuits. And that comes from the taxpayers. In the last four years, since 2008, $6.5 million have been spent in retributions for lawsuits against Metropolitan Police Department. And um, I find it interesting that in the last couple of years, the budget for liability insurance has been around $1 million, and the requested amount for the 2013 fiscal year is almost $7 million for liability insurance. Now, um, I'm not trying to generalize. I have friends on the force. Uh, I think that our police force does the best it can. And unfortunately, though, there are bad apples that kind of paint in the public eye um, a picture that uh, has left people feeling uh, not too warm and fuzzy about our police department, unfortunately. Um, I 
would feel more comfortable before Metropolitan Police Department asked for any more money from the taxpayers if they were making steps and to address these issues why are we having these incidents where the taxpayers are bailing out for for lawsuits but unfortunately as we, we all know in August the use of force board completely resigned that's not a sign of faith that we're moving in the right direction for accountability with our police force um, the assistant sheriff was on that and he resigned so that was my one concern that number an increase of 436 um, percent for liability insurance really stood out to me and I just wanted to make that point for everybody thank you thank you ma'am yes, ma'am good morning commissioners my name is Shirley Shelton most of what I wanted to say has already been said I just wanted to ask you how many taxes have you increased this year and who's paying those because we're losing the more taxes we pay the less jobs there are the less jobs there are the more the crime is it's two plus two you just need to do your homework and you need to have the audit so that we can really analyze this properly thank you yes ma'am let's see hi good morning my name is tasha heath um they as Andy Matthews from NPRI stated, the employees of Las Vegas Metro continue to be some of the highest compensated employees, public or private, in Las Vegas Valley. Um, I have a few questions that I'd like you guys to ask Gillespie, if you could. Um, where is the fiscal audit we asked for? Should people have to pay more to Metro because they can't budget? Why are they getting an option to wear cameras? Um, where is um, the budget plan? How do we know for a fact that he will be using this for more police? Um, how much will Metro be getting from the internet sales tax? We need better training and better budgeting before we give any more of our money to Metro. Uh, they need to learn to work within their budget, stop shooting first and asking questions later, stop making deals with friends for faulty equipment. All these things need to be addressed before we give them more money. Shiny badges don't grant extra rights. You guys, we need to be listening to the people about the taxes. You guys have raised taxes how many times in just the past couple of months? I suggest you don't do it again right now. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Kelly W. Patterson. And uh, personally, I haven't seen any evidence that there's a shortage of cops. Um, they had enough cops to conduct a two-month investigation of some people riding on, side on sidewalks with chalk. Um, they have enough cops that they can shut down Fremont Street every first Friday and set up what looks like an East German checkpoint to make sure that somebody doesn't carry a beer from one bar to the next. They have enough cops to have undercover cops going up and down uh, the strip make sure that somebody isn't selling water because they're competing with casinos, because the casinos sell the water for more money. This isn't a matter of them not having enough money. It's a matter of priorities. They found enough money to take some second-rate guitar player that hardly anybody ever heard of out for a helicopter ride because he wanted to, um, he wanted to propose to his girlfriend. They found the money to build that giant headquarters in the middle of the worst recession in history. They found the money to, uh, well, anyway, the, uh, the elephant is in the room, it's always in the room because there's no, no evidence of it whatsoever. In fact, there is no, there's evidence that has never happened is accountability. There's no accountability whatsoever with Metro or with any Las Vegas Police Department. They, they're paying cops to sit home on vacation after they murder somebody. Jesus Arabalo has been home for almost two years now after he murdered Stanley Gibson. There's nothing, absolutely nothing whatsoever that should, that should justify shooting somebody. And yet in the history, in the 40 year history of Metro, not one single cop has ever been brought up on charges for shooting somebody. Even if that person's been unarmed and completely innocent. The entire 40-year history of Metro, not one single person. The fact that it was, it was called unprecedented when the use of force board recommended that somebody be fired for shooting somebody because they thought his hat was a gun is disgraceful. The fact that Sheriff Gillespie over here 
refuse that recommendation is beyond disrespectful. It's an insult to this community. There's, there's, they're paying out millions of dollars to people who have been either murdered or brutalized by the police. And I'm, I've seen people within my own community where the police are stopping them because they don't have a, a bell on their bicycle or their headlight on their bicycle isn't bright enough because they're looking for any excuse they can to stop people in certain neighborhoods. We've got all these police running around just harassing people, and yet we're told we need more police. There's certain neighborhoods here where they take these saturation teams and they go through, and it's actually part of the stated purpose of these saturation teams that they are going to stop anybody they can for any reason. I've got to ask you to wrap it up, Mr. Peterson. Okay. Well, they need to, instead of coming here and asking us for more money to, to uh, offset their budget that they're wasting, they need to learn how to actually have a budget Thank and you. how to actually prioritize what they're doing instead of being out there harassing everybody and then saying, hey, give us more Thank of your money so we can harass you, you more. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, Board of County Commissioners. My name is Mujahid Ramadan. I live at 5601 Indian Ridge Drive in North Las Vegas. Actually, I live in uh, Commissioner Collins District. And uh, contrary to this gentleman's observation, living in North Las Vegas, I don't see police officers very often. I live near Ann Road in Camino Norte. It's really because of the fact that our police department there is struggling with the fact that very few officers are, are available. So we're not seeing a lot of police officers there. Um, Saturday night, there was a woman, she was killed in the uh, Bolden Area Command, close by here, uh, just north. And um, her name was uh, Dixie Cheney. I grew up in the same neighborhood with her. She was shot to death by uh, a young boy. And a young boy was driving a car. She probably would have liked to have seen a police officer. She was 71 years old. That's so troubling because, you know, at 71, you think you can live your life in comfort. And it's not the police fault there. That's the fact that, you know, we just have troubled young boys who grow up unnurtured and uncared for and untouched, and they don't have no sense of what a life is. So he shot her because he just wanted to make a little quick money. And uh, driving away, just so happened there were two officers in the neighborhood on feet looking for another crime, and they saw a car driving down the street, and uh, the lights were turned off, and then they called in, and they apprehended them pretty quickly. That's been happening in the Bolin area, man. Even when there are fewer homicides, they are capturing people pretty quick. The, the community members feel a bit safer with the area command, the, the police officers that are there. Uh, they call in and they give information. They see something. They say something. And this has historically been a community that's been most trouble with this relationship with the police department. But it's working quite well now. But back to Miss Dixie. Um, I think if Miss Dixie was here this morning, she would say, "Vote for more cops." but she doesn't have a voice. Um, there are a lot of people like Miss Dixie's who are baby boomers who live in that immediate neighborhood who some don't want to leave and others who can't afford to leave. They like to see more cops. The young children who get the benefit sometimes of going camping in the summer or going to Mount Charleston in the wintertime when they're out of school at Matt Kelly and the other school, they probably like to see more cops. Uh, people who live in housing complexes who now see their neighborhood safer and their quality of life changing, they probably like to see more cops. But really, it's in your hands. So when you vote today, think about Miss Dixie, who was shot five times, and there was nobody there to help her. And the fact that that life is gone and her whole family has been traumatized, and the two young men who were involved in the event, their lives are gone also and their families are going to be traumatized. Think about those type of people who can't speak for themselves, and it's in your hands. They say one time there was a man in West Africa. He was known as the smartest man in West Africa. And some young boys decided one day to decide to prove that he wasn't a smart man. So they took up this idea. They said, we're going to put a bird in our hands, and we're going to put this bird in front of this man, and we're going to ask him, is it a dead bird or a live bird? If he says it's a live bird, we'll crush it and prove him wrong. If he says it's a dead bird, we'll let it grow and prove him wrong. They went and knocked on his door. They said, oh, man, is it a dead bird in our hands or a live bird? He said, it's in your hands. And that's where this vote is at, and that's where the lives of people like Miss Dixie and others are at. And hearing the concerns of other individuals, please keep those people's lives who can't speak for themselves. Thank you. Got to ask you to wrap up. Thank you. Mr. Collins. Mr. Commissioner, Commissioners, uh, my name is Chris Collins. I am the Executive Director of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department's uh, Union, Las Vegas 
Police Protective Association that represents the line officers and the corrections officers. I also have the great honor of being the president of the Southern Nevada Conference of Police and Sheriffs, which represents the Henderson supervisors as well as the North Las Vegas police officers. In short, we're here in support of the 1.5, obviously. But there's been a lot of testimony here today about things that quite honestly have nothing to do with the More Cops initiative. Uh, they've talked about the shootings. They've talked about a helicopter ride. Those things are for the sheriff to address, and he is addressing them, I can assure you. Uh, I see it happen every day. They've talked about contract negotiations and how the police officers got a raise. Police officers have been getting raises since 1973 when Metro was formed, and they will continue to be contract negotiation raises into the future, whether this passes today or not. Those things do not belong in this conversation. I support the, the, the talk. I'm happy to have discussions with anyone who wants to talk about them. But we're here today to talk about more cops. The reserve that they speak of, $137 million, that is because Sheriff Gillespie and his staff have managed that money well. That money has to last into the future to pay the salaries of the 600 police officers that the sheriff talked about would be on the payroll. If that money is dwindled away and spent down to nothing as, a, as an extreme, that, those 600 police officers' salary will fall back on you, the county, and the city to fund because that money will not be there. That money cannot be spent. Trust me, I would like to see them dip into it and spend it and, and help out, but it needs to be there into the future. This first quarter cent of more tax cops money goes away in 2025. That, set, that sunsets. If the legislators do not reenact it, that money won't be there to pay for them. Let's talk about what more cops really comes down to for all of you, okay? It comes down to a vote to ensure the public safety of everyone in this room, everyone who lives in Clark County, and the 43 million tourists who come to our, our county each and every year. The sheriff has come here and told you that the numbers are dwindling. We have proof in 2005 when the economy was booming, if not for then under Sheriff Gillespie and Sheriff Bill Young and their team, the more cops bill would not have happened. But it's been said here today that economy will fix crime. Crime was on the rise in 2005. No one can say that the industry, that the economy wasn't booming here. Casinos were being built, but crime was on the rise. They got the half cent approved by the voters, okay? All we're asking that you do today is approve what the voters already have given us. In closing, I would just like to say, all of you, that I have been up and down the hall with have said to me, you have received emails. You have approximately 120,000 people in each of your districts. If you have received 1,000 emails, that's less than 1% of your constituents who have contacted you. It is always the vocal minority who comes out. I've got to wrap it up, Mr. Collins. So please vote yes and know that your constituents and the men and women of public safety will remember today's vote. Thank you, sir. Good morning, buenos dias. My name is Jose Solorio. I reside in Commissioner Larry Brown's district. I've been a resident here in Las Vegas since 1970 as 11-year-old. I come here today in support of the uh, 15 cents per $100 tax that will improve the safety of our community. And to me, a nickel a day is not much of a price to pay for there to be increased safety in our community. And I'll give you a personal example, um, one that I haven't shared. But uh, eight years ago, um, I got a call from my daughter. Uh, she was hostage, kidnapped. I made a call to Metro. At that time, I wasn't politically involved. Um, within an hour, uh, we had a team. They had a team. Um, I was vested. I went and picked up my daughter. She's safe. Today, she's going to college. Had that not happened, she could have well been killed. So our police officers are doing their job day in and day out. Many incidents that you don't know about. And for there to be a decrease in our officers per thousand means that the response time could mean a life or a death. And we need to take that into account. 
And today, you're probably going to decide between 15 cents or 7.5 cents. You're going to try to negotiate to make some people happy. But it's not about making people happy. It's about being public safety out there. It's about us having the, the right amount of police officers, officers there to protect our community, to protect our sons and daughters and mothers and daughters and grandmothers. Now, we may not agree, or you may not agree how they spend the money. That's one thing. You may not agree how they have a pot of money set aside for more cops. That's a different thing. But today, the voters have already approved a quarter for $100, and they're only asking for 15 cents. A nickel a day is worth the safety of our citizens, and we should invest that. And there should be no negotiation between 15 cents and 7.5 cents. And come election time, this will be an issue in each and every one of yours, re-election or if you seek higher office, whether or not you voted for public safety when you were a commissioner. Which way did you vote when public safety was on the line? Did you vote for it or against it? Or did you side with the minority out there that is crying no taxes for any reason? You're here to serve us. I'm asking you to serve us. Approve the right amount. Approve the 15 cents today. Public safety is number one in anybody's book. Please keep that number one in your vote today. Thank you. Thank you, Slurry. Good morning. I think it's still morning. Um, chairman and commissioners, my name is Lisa Mayo. First thing I wanted to say um, is I hope that everybody watching and all 120,000 of your constituents in your district realize that Chris Collins, who is up here basically lobbying against, I think, citizens in many ways, is paid for by you, the taxpayer. You pay his salary and those of his eight officers. So I think people should realize that when people come up and, and say that. I'm actually here today um, on behalf of many of the Oh, officer-involved shooting families, Eric Scott, Ralphie Olivas, Tanner Chamberlain, and South Lee Ketmany, um, all victims of officer-involved shootings. The most recent was July 23, 2013, when Mr. Ketmany, a 35-year-old father of two young children was and a Vegas tourist, was shot and killed by Metro officers. If video was available in all of these officer-involved shootings, going back to Eric Scott and all the others, the truth would be much easier for families to find as they looked for answers. Um, I testified to the legislature on May 22nd, 2013, in support of the more tax cops. I was there to support this tax. So long as mandatory body cameras were part of the more cops tax increase and would be considered required equipment. Why body cameras? Because studies coupled with actual police department results show that body cameras improve the public trust and result in fewer complaints against police departments. They are a win-win for both the public and the police. In a May Senate committee hearing, Senator Ruben Kuhn asked for a letter from Metro ensuring body cameras for all officers. I believe that we've put this up before, but I'll put it up again. Uh, this letter stated, Here's the letter, and I was so encouraged that the sheriff and Metro were in favor of body cameras. They had been working with the NAACP, the ACLU, and other work groups on body cameras. The letter was very encouraging, and the letter promises in the last sentence to maintain our communication with the public. I consider myself a part of that public because I was testifying at the legislature. Then I found out that a letter dated July 15, 2013 from the PPA was sent to all Metro officers bragging the PPA convinced Metro to make the wearing of body cameras voluntary for all officers except those hired after July 30, 2013, which amounts to about 30 officers of the 600 officers they have. There was not a press release. There was no public communication as promised. I and the NAACP and others had to find out about the letter on our own with no direct communication from Metro. This is a breach of public and political trust. If all officers are not wearing body cameras and only a few rookie cops are forced to wear them, this will erode the already poor culture that exists in our police department. Good police work is based on strong teamwork, good communication, and a common bond to protect one another. I'm almost done. One officer with a body camera and others who, who do not wear a body camera will result in morale issues and most certainly legal issues down the road. 
Because of this breach of trust and lack of transparency related to body cameras, I urge you to not vote for the more tax today. People will not remember public safety in your elections. They will remember transparency, and openness, and honesty. Ma Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Marlo Turner. I'm a lifelong uh, resident of Nevada, and I was not planning on speaking today, so please forgive my casual appearance. Uh, what prompted me to come up here today was uh, seeing a number of the speakers who did come up here. Uh, I happen to know many of them. Many of them spoke about integrity and transparency, and yet many of them came up here with their own agendas, which they failed to disclose to you. Um, as far as the no new taxes, you know, we have... Um, Actually, let me just go back a second. I have spent my life fighting for equality and for civil rights. I know many of you in this community. I know many of you sitting in the audience. When we're fighting for everybody, we have to remember that everybody is the sum of its parts. Metro is not everybody. Metro is a sum of its parts. There are many people in here who don't care for the sheriff. There are many people in here who don't care for me or for you or for somebody else. We have to take it apart and look at what is the good and what is the bad. At the end of the day, the good is about public safety. The good is about when I make that phone call, will there be somebody there who answers my call? This isn't about, do you like the sheriff? It isn't about, do you like taxes? It's not about, do you like police officers? Do you like government intrusion? It's about public safety. At the end of the day, the tax, the 15 cent, is going to go to the rank and file. It doesn't go to the sheriff. It doesn't go to me or to you. It goes to ensure public safety. It's the rank and the file, and it's the citizenry. As a lifelong resident of Las Vegas, my children are born and raised here. Public safety is important to me. I ask for your vote in favor of the tax. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. I am a resident of um, Chairman Sisolak's district, and I'm a cop mom. That's my agenda. And I'm also um, a volunteer at Metro, and so I support police officers because I know the sacrifice is made by families, by spouses, by children. I know that they know the dangers that are faced. And I've also observed in my decades a change in criminal activity. It's become much more violent, much more cruel. And I hear it's hands-on every time, almost every time. It's not a respectful yes, sir, and obey the law, as my mother brought my brothers up to do. And so the violence that we're facing would be very difficult to face without police officers there to help us. If we had to face it in our own neighborhoods, and I'm in a working class neighborhood that's changing, but we've been blessed. We, my husband and I started a neighborhood watch years ago and we got to know our neighbors a little bit. That does help. But it's not the same thing as having someone coming through your door and being able to respond. I really don't wanna be a concealed weapon carrier. I don't want to have to feel that it's so unsafe. I'd better learn to shoot a shotgun through my front door. I would like to continue to have the presence of law enforcement. And the one, the one piece of data that holds up is the correlation between presence and public safety. And that's why now that we're changing Las Vegas and the way it's, we do business, we want a New Year's Eve Mardi Gras atmosphere on the Strip and downtown all the time. We were bringing it outdoors. That means we're going to have to pull our officers out of our neighborhoods and send them to the Strip where there's alcohol flowing on the streets, where everything's happening out there in the open. Even the pimps and the drug dealers feel safer if there's presence there. They're safer too, as well as the rest of our tourists, and our tourists are bringing in the money. So I think that we really need to seriously consider that. And the other point I want to make as part of the family of law enforcement is that I know of no other body so under scrutiny, not any other body where people take pictures of everything police officers do. Somebody's got a camera. 
they are always under scrutiny. And I want, I want them to know of my support. And I hope you'll support them as well. Thank you. Thank you. We can line up two people at the microphones here. It'll, we will uh, Dorothy Barnes, sorry. Dorothy Barnes, Las Vegas resident. I have a mailing address of P.O. Box 466. I, here I do support law enforcement, but what I'm against, I got a ticket from an officer. It's badge number 8727 here. I told him I was coming. His name, last name Jackson. Badge number 8727. Ba ja officer Jackson. I told him I was coming to this meeting. What happened? He wrote me this ticket, right? I've been trying to get an appointment with Sheriff Gillespie. The last two meetings he was at the county commissioner meeting, he told me to call the secretary and make an appointment. Every time I call, the secretary will not give me an appointment. So what I felt the need to do was go back out by the freeway with my sign that said, please help. Anybody that will tell the truth will let me on Nellis, please help. He comes along on his motorbike. Other officers had passed me by because they know of this situation. Of course, they don't want to be embarrassed. But he comes by, and he's bold, and I'm telling him, well, I've been trying to get an appointment with Sheriff Gillespie to sell this thing and get some information on how I can get some results because I'm robbed without a gun day and night in this city. I'm lied on. I'm sickly. I get lied on in my doctor's office. My doctor is frustrated. I'm the only patient he got that he can't get the truth on. And I don't want doctors operating on me and messing my help up all lies that people that's stealing money from me, what they call stipend, and it's a dignified way to rob this disabled and sickly people. And I've asked them to remove my name off their program. I had a confrontation on the way here at the bus station, and I called the police. I said, well, I'm on my way to the county commissioner's meeting to complain now. Allied bargain is no good to protect the customers. I pay the same price every other customer pay. But then, I want good officers. We don't want to hire nobody else that's not efficient. We don't, you can have a lot of people that don't know what they're doing. You have a few that know what they're doing and get the job done and believe in taking care of business getting law and order. I've had people sell drugs over me, theme off of me, and I, I found out that an officer was even engaged in sex with a lady, a friend of mine that's doing drugs, and I, I don't need no more officers like that. I don't want no more on the force child molestering, uh, pedophiling, doing these things. We need good, qualified officers that will have a good reputation, uphold a reputation for the whole police department and the whole citizen, not just work for certain people. We need good officers. I'm voting for good officers, but I, I, I want Officer Jackson to know that I did come. Badge number 8727. I'm called out of city council meeting. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. For the record, Gina Grison. Uh, I wish I would have done that when I got the ticket um, in error by the officer way out there in the northwest, and the charges had to be dropped, but after I had to take three days off of work to go do it. Um, but they did issue a nice newsletter throughout Metro about my situation um, because I guess a lot of places issued tickets in error on stop signs. But anyway, um, I'm here today because I'm confused. I know that this was an issue, uh, you know, last month or so, and there was a line of people, and I hope all of their comments will be considered because they probably couldn't come back today to talk about the more cops issue. Um, you know, I, th and I think that was one of the reasons it was postponed. There was a line out the door. They were actually stopping people from coming in that day because it was a fire hazard. Um, I, I may be mistaken, but can someone tell me if there were town halls held and things like that? I, I was told that there was going to be all these town halls and there was going to be all this discussion because there were so many unanswered questions about this Amor Cops issue. I didn't see any. I was prepared to attend. I have a lot of questions. I didn't see any town halls held. So I guess what I'm going to say today is not to vote for or against. What I'm going to say is, I don't think we're prepared. I don't think you're prepared to vote on this. I don't think the people have had all their questions answered, which the sheriff promised. And since that last meeting, the sheriff has decided not to run for re-election, and to give you know money, uh, you know basically to a sheriff that is no longer accountable to the people because he's choosing not to run again. Um, and I'm not saying I don't trust him. I'm just saying there's so many issues within Metro. And I heard a speaker before me say, this is about the more cops. This isn't about shootings or helicopter rides. No, this is exactly what this is about. Because when we were here, when all the officer-involved shootings were occurring, the only way that we can actually get the attention of Metro is through purse strings. And everyone in this room knows that. We can only get that attention. When we passed all those coroner's inquest reforms, it was because everyone was running for election, everyone was on their best behavior, and as soon as the elections were over and this board got back together again last January, they, they reversed all of the hard work that we had done. 
So this is, you know, when it comes to money, that's the only time you can get people's attention to do the right thing. I, t I heard the sheriff earlier talk about, we, we brought the shootings down. We did this. We did. Why were the shootings ever up? Why were they ever up? Why were we shooting citizens that shouldn't, unarmed citizens? Why was that happening in the first place? We should have, I mean, that was like when my daughter said, but mom, I brought my grades up. Well, you know what? They never should have dropped in the first place. So I'm just here to say, I don't think the questions have been answered yet. I think obviously there's been a long line of people here that have a lot of questions. There's still a lot of concerns. And now with all due respect to the sheriff, because I think he's a nice man, we have a lame duck sheriff. Okay? And I, and I don't think that we should be giving them money now. I think we should wait. We have a, obviously we're going to have a new sheriff soon or next year. You know, let's wait. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, hi, Gary Cushon, Clark County. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is I'd like to talk about just law enforcement nationwide, not just Las Vegas. And from my eyes, I see that uh, the biggest crimes in our country, police officers, police officers don't prosecute. For example, when we had the 2008 uh, false flag uh, economic crisis, uh, according to AP and Bloomberg, the bankers stole over $30 trillion from the American people. It was a transfer of wealth from the working class, the middle class, to the very richest people in society. They weren't prosecuted. The Secretary of the Treasury, Hank Paulson, stole, uh, what is it, $100 million from the American people. And when he was asked, who gave you authorization, uh, Oh, nobody did, he said. He said, I gave myself a waiver. Uh, how about all the corporate and Wall Street criminals that have shipped all the jobs that people can support a family on to slave labor countries such as China? Why aren't they prosecuted? Uh, how, about, how about another one is uh, Monsanto, one of the most evil companies in the world, are poisoning our food with GMO food, GMO corn, GMO soy. If you go to any, go to any grocery store, all the packaged food, it'll have corn syrup this, high fruit, uh, corn starch this, soy this, soy that. Uh, what else? How about the fluoride, the poisons that are putting in our water, including here in Clark County? How come no one's being prosecuted for putting poisons in our water? And uh, one of my favorite shows last I watched, uh, I mean, listened to on Saturday was Coast to Coast AM. It had... Uh, the guest was William Scott, the father of the murdered uh, uh, Eric Scott. He was talking. You can play. You go to YouTube and you can bring it up. Just type September 28, 2013. It'll come right up. You can listen to it. He talked about uh, the uh, the good officers in the metro that he was uh, that that he's communicating with, and, and uh, they said that in their opinion, about 25 to 30 percent of the officers in metro are rogue cops. A lot of them are kids between, the, he said, this is what the, he said, between 25 and 40 years old who grew up on video games where they're desensitized to killing people. He stated that what they said was and the good cops, if they, they, they run into someone with trouble, they would, uh, you know, they would gradually, progressively go from less force to more force. They would bring out the baton. Maybe they would bring out the taser and then shoot someone. But these 30 percent, are, are just ready to kill people. So we the people are sick of that. And then when the last time I was here, I mentioned that uh, Sheriff Gillespie uh, apparently didn't have an oath of office from whenever he took office in 2000, what was it, 2006 or 7, until April 30th of, uh, of this year. So from a legal standpoint, he was not our sheriff. Sheriff Gillespie was operating under the color of law. I mean, if, that, if that's not true, please correct me, Sheriff Gillespie. Uh, so, uh, what else have I got to say? I mean, you commissioners all have children and grandchildren. And, uh, you know, maybe 15, how about 15, 20, whenever. If your grandson or granddaughter comes up to you and say, you know, what did you do to stop this police state? We've got to ask you to Hopefully you'll say, I, I, I decided to de-escalate uh, this police state and tyranny. We've got to thank ask you. you. Did you want to identify yourself for the record? I don't know if they got oh, that. Oh, Gary, you. Gary Cushon. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Rick Brown, uh, O'Bannon Drive, Las Vegas. We were here about a month ago on the same topic, and I got up and spoke, and I said that we needed to audit Metro before changing any tax structure. 
They have money to use. They're not going to fall apart. The sky's not falling, Sheriff. Tomorrow, if you don't have the tax increase, we're not all going to, to perish. The, the, the union man wants everybody to think, you know, and hide the, the money that is there to be used. We, we, we have so much waste going on. And I cited three instances before you last month. And somebody said, well, you only found three things. I said, no, I only had two minutes. You know, uh, the sheriff gets up and speaks, and he can speak as long as he desires, I guess. But when you hear from us, we get two minutes, and there's probably a lot more to be said. We need an audit in Metro. We that must do something to stop uh, the, the wasteful spending that's going on. And you come to us and want more money. You raised the gas tax last month. You, you, you raised the, the price of water last month. And, you know, come on, where's it going to end, folks? You know, uh, I don't, I'm not able to go to somebody and say, well, I'm a little bit short this year. I, I need you guys to help me out. No, I have to reevaluate my spending. I have to reevaluate what I do with my money, if I can afford to go to get a hamburger or whatever. But they also are responsible for their money. And they need to live within their means, just like I do, just like you have to. It's time that we audit Metro. It's time that we know what's going on. It's time that there be some, some uh, a, a glass held over that, and so we can see what's going on. Thank you very much. And I'm against this tax. Thank you, sir. I've got to ask you to refrain from applause, please, and I respect to all the speakers. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission. Warren Hardy, I'm here today representing the city of Mesquite. And uh, Chief Tanner and I, here today, are, I are here today because uh, we're a little bit concerned that there's been so much focus on Metro, and that's appropriate. Uh, there ought to be a lot of focus on Metro. Metro is the largest police department impacted by this. But there are small police departments that are impacted greatly by this who don't have a surplus, who don't have a lot of the other things that we have a, the potential that have been discussed as potential options. I have a long history on this issue. In fact, uh, in another life as uh, chairman of the Senate Government Affairs Committee, I introduced the original legislation to bring this question before the people. And it was important to me at that time that the question did come before the people. But the, with all due respect to Metro, the reason I introduced that was not because I was concerned about Metro. Certainly we're, we're concerned about all law enforcement. But I was concerned about the small uh, rural and small town uh, police departments that I represented, including Mesquite, Boulder City, Henderson, I had parts of North Las Vegas. That's the reason I, I agreed to sponsor the legislation to bring the original question forward and to ask the people about it. And it's interesting that we've, we've been in, involved in a debate here, quite uh, quite lengthy debate this morning, and every single person has spoken to the impact on Metro. Again, very, very important. But I want to I want to make sure the council or the commission uh, keeps in mind that there are other police departments that are dramatically impacted by this. Mesquite is a border city. It, it, we are the first line of defense in law enforcement for this county. Uh, yet we have a police officer to uh, resident uh, ratio that is the lowest in the state. Um, and so I just, w with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to just turn it over to, if I could, Chief Tanner to talk about our particular needs. But we really want to make sure that the focus is also on the small departments as well. Thank you. And I want to make sure the clerk starts the clock over again. So he gets his full three minutes. Okay. Yep, perfect. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Chief Troy Tanner, Mesquite PD. Uh, Mesquite Police Department had a, I've said this before, had a 7% increase in Part 1 crimes since 2011 to 2012. Over a year, we've had a 7% increase also. And on top of that, of course, our calls of service have raised. We've had uh, probably about a 15% increase in calls, even though revenues decline and the population has decreased to some degree. Um, I also want to make you aware that uh, as far as our ratio, 1.58 officers per 1,000, national average is 2.0. Um, that's including our administration. It's myself and two captains. So we do have a small department, and, uh, but this is vital to our organization, the money you know, that we receive, and we appreciate the funding we've had up to this point. Um, the, 15, the point 15 will raise our ratio to 1.71. It would give us two more officers. And uh, 
that's a big difference to us. I know we're small, like I said, but that's a huge difference. And uh, revenue declines have hit us hard, and uh, we only have about $26,000 left in reserves. And like some agencies, we're, we were so low in our reserves, we actually took one of our more cops officers and our city council was nice enough to allow us to move it into the general budget this last year in 2013. So we've had such a decline in revenue, we can't even support the officers we currently have in more cops. And I appreciate the relationship and knowing we can always call Metro for assistance. I have done that several times this year. Um, we have Bunkerville right next to us. We communicate really well. The sheriff and his staff have been excellent as far as needing help on a couple of homicides we had this last year to send CSI teams up that we're not large enough to have. Other agencies contact me, such as North Las Vegas and Henderson, offered their people also. So our relationship's been great in Clark County. We work well together. Um, like I said, we value that relationship. Mesquite Anchors Emergency Services in the northeast corner. And I-15 has a lot of traffic, of course. You know, the corridors, we have the corridor right on the edge of our town. Department assist other agencies. We have reduced presence in that area. And we want to continue to provide a safe gateway to Southern Nevada. All law enforcement agencies in Clark County utilizing partnerships to help cover the deficit created in funding shortfalls. Um, by these partnerships, they cannot put more officers on the street. We need your vote. Like I said, vital to Mesquite. It's important to me. I went up to legislation and testified every chance I got because it is important to our city. So I appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Chairman, County Commissioners, my name is Joe Cronister. I'm the Chief of Police in the City of North Las Vegas. First, let me tell you, thank you for your time and this opportunity to be here. As far as the City of North Las Vegas goes, it's, it's well reported. The, the budget shortfalls that we've experienced in the city of North Las Vegas. I can assure you, just from the police department alone, we've experienced a decrease of roughly between 35 and, 50, and $40 million in our budget over the last four years. That has had a significant impact on our operation. We're, we are authorized 394 police officers. We currently have 268, which equals 1.165 officers per thousand residents in the city of North Las Vegas. As Mr. Ramadan stated earlier, he lives in North Las Vegas and he doesn't see a lot of police officers driving through his neighborhood. Unfortunately, that's the reality that we live in today. Um, we've had to close our jail uh, as a result of, of budget reductions. The city of Las Vegas and North Las Vegas have partnered and uh, have a shared services agreement where we've been able to take on and, and ensure that we were still able to, to continue to at least have a portion of our um, jail services that are still a North Las Vegas component. I, I think it goes without saying that for a period of, 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 of time in the early 2000, 2004, 5, 6, the city of North Las Vegas is one of the fastest growing communities in the nation. Also during that period, shortly after that, we had two and sometimes three of the top foreclosed zip codes in the nation. Our dependency upon property tax has been very much impacted. The more cops has truly been a lifeline to the residents of North Las Vegas, as well as the men and women of the North Las Vegas Police Department. We're absolutely committed to doing everything that we can to partner with all the local law enforcement agencies, as well as our federal partners here within this valley. But as well, we're committed to the residents to do our very best with what it is that we have. I urge you to consider what this more cops increase would mean to the residents of North Las Vegas, as well as the men and women of the North Las Vegas Police Department. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. My name is Marlene Droz, and I, work, I live in Clark County. And I've heard a lot of uh, impassioned pleas today, and uh, I'm against the tax because I feel everyone on this commission, before they rule on anything, is do a line-by-line -line audit of each. I believe that Metro does have the money. I just believe it's wasteful spending. Now, back in 2008, when the recession was in full swing, there were 2,498 officers on the payroll. Five years later, today in 2013, there are 2,480. That's a difference of 18 officers. I don't believe this tax is going to be spent on more officers. I believe they should tap into the reserve fund. 
uh, and it should be used. That's what it's there for. The taxpayers can no longer afford this burden. We have no more money. Before any tax, we, like the gentleman before, he said, you know, the gas tax, the water tax, NV Energy, we are being taxed to death. Before any taxes, and that includes property taxes, I think the commission, well, and the state legislature also should be looking at, which might please go uh, on deaf ears, the gaming tax, it's only 6.75%. Why do they get a break? There are so many casinos in this town. It's not going to hurt the casino industry to raise that tax 10% and to be 10%. That would give a lot more revenue to the valley, to the state, where it can go to other uh, police uh, in smaller counties. I mean, they have to look at this. Uh, the money is there. There has to be an audit. Everything is being wasted, and the taxpayers, uh, they need relief. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Peter DeJoseph, uh, here today in favor of the cop tax. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to mention um, regarding the sheriff and his issues. I'm sure the sheriff like myself, has had days when I wake up and turn on the news and see the Costa Concordia racked up on the rocks of Italy. And at that point, I have to get down on my knees and forgive myself for all the stupid things I've ever done in my life. And I'm sure the sheriff has had days like that. So another thing the sheriff understands is, as a master car custom carpenter who's built many multi-million dollar homes in my lifetime, it takes a lot of money to get things done, and there's a lot of responsibility to get that thing, those things done. And I think the sheriff understands that when he says he needs this cop tax. As a long-haul truck driver on and off for the last 24 years, I've been everywhere in the U.S. and Canada at least three or four times. I've walked the streets of poor, po impoverished neighborhoods all from, from coast to coast of this country. There's a dynamic going on in this country where the word is getting out that it's better to be poor in Las Vegas than it is to be poor anywhere else in this country. There's more here to give than anywhere else. People are coming to Las Vegas from all over the country to escape the horrid, impoverished conditions that we have never seen here in Vegas. The poverty that existed down there in, 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 the, in the parishes in New Orleans would make bring tears to your eyes if people live like that. The poverty in East Kansas City, the poverty in all of Louisiana and Mississippi, uh, horrible conditions. Anyway, thousands of people are, are, are flocking to Vegas, to Clark County. It's apparent in the number of students we have in the schools. We have to look beyond the end, behind, beyond the tip of our nose to understand what's going, what we need to do. Um, the uh, uh, <laughs> I lost my train of thought here, but but uh, the one thing our main the one thing that we've really got to understand is we've got to prevent Clark County from being L.A. County someday. L.A. County is a violent, vicious, sadistic, uh, corrupt, concrete jungle of a city. And if we're not careful, we're going to be the same way as L.A. If you don't believe me, please get in your car. Go to L.A. County. Go to the courtrooms there. Start with the traffic court. See what's going on in there. The judges are just taking the, the file and tossing them over their shoulder. They're so frustrated with the level of crime and corruption and, and, and uh, the, uh, the problems that are going on in that county. We can't get there. And Doug Gillespie knows it. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Ms. Chief. Hey, good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, I'm here again before you today to ask for your support in, the, in this measure. Um, the city of Henderson has been a very beneficial and benefited from the More Cops initiative. Um, you know, the city of Henderson had a 267 officers uh, for the general fund, which is less than one officer per 100,000 people. After the tax initiative, we were able to move up to about 1.4. Um, but what's the payoff of that? What's the goal of what we wanted for more cops? Safest city in America. 
Um, those are the recognition that the city of Henderson has got consistently over the past several years. Uh, we want to keep that. We've noticed uh, what, what, what does the safest community bring you? It brings you families that move into your neighborhoods. It brings you businesses back into your community. Um, you know, we want to keep that for the folks. Um, you know, and it takes a lot of uh, partnerships to go along with that. It takes a mayor, it takes a city council, city manager that support public safety. It takes the partnerships of those law enforcement agencies that are in this room today that we support, Las Vegas Metro and North Las Vegas and Mesquite and Boulder City. Uh, we support them in need, including federal agencies out of Lake Mead when they need help. Um, unfortunately, today we've seen as communities or families come to the, our community, population increases, demands increase. Uh, unfortunately, our staffing numbers have decreased. Uh, we, we see crime starting to inch up. We see case closures starting to take longer and longer. And uh, the thing we want to do is maintain being one of the safest communities in America. I think that was the payoff. I think that was the goal uh, that wanted to be achieved by more cops. Um, a lot of folks ask, you know, does it make a difference for one cop, 50 cops, 100 cops? It does, and it has in the city of Henderson. Uh, in Mesquite and Boulder City, they may only get one or two officers out of the More Cops initiative, but, you know, 22 years ago when I took my oath, I said, hey, I'm going to make a difference in the community. That's what's done by every police officer that I see coming out of our academy. So whether it's one officer or 40 officers for the city of Henderson, they make a difference, and that difference can be can be changed today by the difference you guys can make in that. So I appreciate your support and the time I got to speak to you. Thank you, Chief. Hi, my name is Ella Brewer. I'm, I'm here to support uh, Sheriff Gillespie. I truly believe that they need the tax. We need the protection. My concern is, say for instance, someone is breaking in my home. I call 911. Okay, we'll have an officer out there. The officer comes 15, 20 minutes later, I'm dead on the floor. Why? Because they did not have enough officers. We need to protect our children, the, the elderly, the uh, uh, visitors that come in here. What if there's a mass shooting? Like there was in Denver. We're not going to get the tourists, the people come here to visit. No, you don't want to go to Vegas. So let's, let's just uh, uh, support this for six cents a day. We truly need more officers. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Go ahead, yes, sir. My name is Richard Lozo, L-O-Z-O. I think that the problem lies in accountability and accounting, and as one gentleman said, about making sure that the money is used in the right way and in the right places. I agree with the articles that I read from Commissioner Sisolak that he's not approving this, and I can see why. I agree with the article that Susan Brager had about saying She's going to cut it down because Gillespie and, uh, not Gillespie, but the Sheriff's Department has a surplus of $124 million. I get a little disappointed in things that the paper talks about, the radio talks about, TV talks about, because all the facts are either wrong, they're not true, or whatever. March of this last year, it said in the paper here that there were a hundred, almost 200 officers in the Metro Police Department that got over $200,000 a year. Wow! Is that true? If that's true, that figure comes to $30 million. $30 million that the sheriffs got that the paper says that they got for that one year. Where is the accountability and whatever are they doing to see to curb the expenses and how are these guys getting all of that money? If you took as an average salary for a police officer, and I think of 40 or 50,000, they start at 50,000. All the facts are not put out. They don't tell how many policemen that they have, what the starting salary is, what the, what the senior officers get, etc. 
the money is being put around there, and they have enough money right now to hire over 200 policemen on the surplus that they have. I understand that their budget is about $60 million, but they say, or excuse me, $66 million, and they're only taking in $60 million. There's $6 million in the hole every year. That's what I hear. Well, if there's $6 million in the hole, somebody's got to sit down and say, hey, we got to cut this expense, we got to cut this or cut that to get back down to what's coming in and what we pay. Everybody that's in a house nowadays, if they're getting $3,000 income coming into their house, they can't spend 4000 They have to keep the thing down where below. I believe they have the money there. And I'm really saying to the council, take a good look at it. Don't vote on it today. Put it aside for a while and take a look to see if what I'm telling you is the truth, there's something wrong. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Yes, my name is Ed Euling. And even though I raised my hand that I was going to talk and I wanted to talk, I wasn't serious. But when the man comes up here and says, oh, look at all the problems we have in North Las Vegas, uh, the lack of security we have in North Las Vegas, it was the police department and the fire department who caused the bankruptcy of North Las Vegas. That's what happened. And, and the same thing is going to happen here. We're spending $500 million a year on Metro, and it's not enough to have, uh, to have uh, a public peace. Well, I'm glad the other person mentioned Los Angeles and Los Angeles County. I have some familiarity with Los Angeles County since I started, uh, since I invested in hundreds of homes in, uh, in South Los Angeles uh, in the 70s and 80s. And when Daryl Gates became the police commissioner, uh, as if the previous ones weren't bad enough, it became obvious that he was, with his treatment of the people, of the black people and of the, uh, of the Latinos moving into Los Angeles, it was obvious that he was raising the level of anger of the people in, the, in that city. And if, if you go back, that is the cause of the crime in Los Angeles, the high level of crime in Los Angeles. Where, uh, they don't... Uh, they don't help public safety. We're dealing, that's true. The main issue is public safety. Do they create public unsafety or do they create public safety? And when the police department comes in and acts as an occupying army, they create insecurity. They, they don't uh, contribute to public safety. And when, when our department is shooting up, uh, is killing, is, uh, is number three in the whole country in the number of people killed, when our department is, it has police cars all over the place, not for public safety, but to collect money for the government uh, at every corner, uh, th that's not public safety. When our police department is, is, uh, is pulling over mainly uh, uh, minority people and good-looking women and, uh, and young people and throwing them down on the sidewalk, and putting handcuffs on them and mistreating them, this raises the level of anger with people. People get angry with this sort of behavior. When, when these kids are being stopped on the street and asked questions and having their picture taken as if they're some kind of criminals, uh, it causes, it causes, it isn't contributing to public safety. It's the opposite. When, uh, in fact, the statistic is any kid that has an interaction with the police department uh, when he's young, almost certainly he's going to become a criminal later in his life. They contribute to crime. They don't solve it. Good yeah, afternoon, Commissioner, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner. Terry Murphy, 516 South 6th Street. I'm here representing the Downtown Las Vegas Alliance, as well as Mr. Irwin Mulaski and Rich Worthington, president of the Mulaski Companies. Um, our number one priority on the Downtown Alliance, which rep is representing small and large businesses who contribute to Metro, is public safety. We want our residents and our tourists to feel safe when they come downtown. We supported the 0.25 cent 
increase with the sheriff up in the legislature. Mr. Molaski was here last month to support the 0.15 uh, cent increase. However, we appreciate sincerely the due diligence that you all have done as a board. Um, our primary concern is that something gets passed today. The reason for that is that we face, we work very closely with Metro on a daily basis out on the street with our downtown area commander. We see the issues that they face and um, we respect the burden of this decision that you face and we appreciate your hard work and dedication on it. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. My name is Rolando Larras. I am at 820 East Charleston. I own the LasVegasTribune.com and RadioTribune.com. Most of the information that I got here is only hearsay because uh, boss of my organization has been discriminated by Sheriff Gillespie from day one when he took office. And I'm not prior to any of that information that other newspapers carry. I have to depend on sources within the police department. But I believe that most of the stuff that are here, you know, like the man that said, then uh, Mrs. Dixon would be alive, it would be more cops. If uh, the other guy is complaining about something else, uh, you know, there is nine detectives working in the Police Protective Association making a, a detective salary with almost $200,000 each. They could be out there in the street patrolling the streets. There is nine PIO office, for a, a, a public information office. You guys don't have nine police, a, a, a public information office, and you are a bigger organization making also a salary. They got 19 executive directors making over $200,000 a year. Probably, you know, like the P, like a PIO, they got a female civilian working as a, giving orders and bossing around professional in police officers with integrity and experience. And you have a civilian that came from Channel 8 to work as a public information officer making $200,000, those people can be out there in the street patrolling the street. It's not only that. If the sheriff wants more money, what he should do is use the, en the energy that he's using with you guys over here and go to the casinos and lobby to the casinos to allow lottery to come to, to, to Nevada. Lottery can produce a lot of money in this town for the school, for police, and for everybody else. But the sheriff wants to get the money from you because you are the one that listen because with the exception of the chairman of this board, I don't think anybody else care about the community and this board. I wasn't even going to talk about today because uh, all of you received the, the the Las Vegas Tribune online, I guarantee you, you don't know what the last editorial said because you don't read it. You don't have time for the little paper. You have to kiss the butt of the big paper, the only paper we got in town now. That's what it is. The sheriff need to push his priority first. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello. My name is Celia Olson, and I'm a resident of Las Vegas, and I love living in Las Vegas. I'm also a senior, and uh, I'm one of those victims. I'm one of those people that my house got broke into. Um, they took a lot of my precious things, my belongings, things that I really treasure, but that wasn't it. Th those things can get replaced. But what they took away from me was the feeling of feeling safe. I will never, never feel safe. I always thought that I would feel safe in my home. No, that's not true. They broke in and, and they were able to get in and take all these things. And I have never, have never felt so full of fear. And when I'm driving on the highway, an innocent driver going to get a prescription or getting groceries, 
I see these people in a rush and crossing the white lines, which tells you do not cross that white line because somebody might be exiting, and it, it, it's, it's a, a fear. And the reason I wanted to represent myself here is that we need more cops to help us keep the safety of our town. Never mind the money, the money is always there. Dig in your pockets, the money comes up, and we can afford to hire more cops. It's our safety. Nothing is more precious than our lives, all of our lives. This is more precious, you can never replace that. For moms, for dads, for brothers, for daughters, for the service people that are helping our country. We need our safety above everything else. That's the quality. I'm so glad that I was able to come here and speak and represent my feelings. And I thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Seeing and hearing none, I want to thank everyone for participating in the public hearing and for their comments. At this time, I will close this portion of the public hearing.